everyone, welcome back. We're going to take a look right now at how to calculate something called the correlation coefficient. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what it means, and then I'm going to show you how to calculate it. And then we're going to actually flip over to a little um, internet game and, and practice um, our understanding of the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient is a value, and it's given the letter R. And every R value will be a number between negative 1 and 1. So you will never get an R value greater than 1 or less than negative 1. If your R value is positive, it means you have a, an increasing or a positive relationship between your two variables. Or another way of saying that is the slope will be a positive number. All right? And in our example, we have seen that. Um, when R is negative, it suggests you have a negative relationship between your two variables or a decreasing relationship. Another way of saying that is that your slope would be negative. So if R is positive, the slope of your linear model is positive. If R is negative, then the slope of your linear model is negative. So those two signs go hand in hand. The slope, oh, excuse me, the sign of the slope and the sign of the correlation coefficient, they have to be the same. All right, the closer the value is to zero, the more scattered your data. And the closer your R value is to 1 or negative 1, the less scattered or the more linear your data. So let's take a look. Some of you have already noticed that an R and an R squared are popping up. And just take note, R, right, it's 0.995 or 0.996. That is pretty close to 1, all right? And that's because we have a pretty strong linear relationship. If you remember our graph, if I hit zoom 9, that's a pretty strong linear relationship. All right, now how do I get that number? You get that number the exact same way that you get your slope and your y-intercept. Stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1. So let's just remind you of those buttons. And if your R and R squared aren't popping up, hold tight. We're going to fix it. So again, it's always stat calc 8, L1, comma, L2, comma, Y1. All right, and there's my R and my R squared. Okay, now if you're not seeing R and R squared, let's fix it. Here's how we do it. You've got one of two ways. If you have the old operating system, you have to do it this way. And, and all of us can do it this way. But let's do it old school way. So hit second and zero. I want you to go into your catalog. You have to turn something called your diagnostics on. For some reason, when TI-84 makes these calculators, the, the factory presets are they come with your diagnostics off. So this should be a one-time thing, and we need to turn our diagnostics on. So we need to scroll down till we find diagnostics. It's alphabetical. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to scroll. It's going to take me a while. Oops. Wait for it. Oh, we're getting closer. Okay. So scroll to diagnostics on. It looks like I had to scroll about 53 times, so it, it's down there. All right, hit enter, and then hit enter again, and your diagnostics are on. Now, if you weren't seeing R and R squared before, you should. So let you should see it now. So let's try it again. Stat, calc, 8, L1, L2, comma, there we go, Y1. All right, so we should be able to see our, our R value. If you have the newer operating system, let me clear this out. This is the faster way, and not all the calculators have this. Again, my home calculator, I don't have this option. But if you have the newer operating system, if this mode menu extends, go down to where you see stat diagnostics. You could have also turned them on this way. All right, so again, the newer operating systems, or I should say the newer calculators have that option. The older ones don't. All right, so with that, I want us, let me actually re-show you this, right? Our R value was pretty close to 1 because we had a pretty strong linear relationship. But I want us to start to get the feels of what it means to have a strong R value, a weak R value. What is R even measuring? So let me go ahead and pop up a little... Let me get this up. A pop up a little game. All right, and we're going to click between these. So, again, the correlation coefficient's got to be a number between negative 1 and 1. All right, positive R values mean you have a positive relationship, negative R values, negative relationship. The closer R is to 0, the more scattered the data. 
the closer R is to negative one or one. So these, these extremes here, the less scattered the data. All right, so let's guess some correlations. So here you see four scatter plots. All right, and I want us to figure out which of these four correlation values correspond to which of these four scatter plots. All right, so let's start with positive versus negative relationships. I think you can see here, if I was gonna overlay a line, all right, it would be a negatively sloped line. So this has got a negatively sloped line, this would have had a negatively sloped line, this would have been positive, this would have been positive. And arguably looking at this, Right, these two down here on the bottom definitely look like stronger lines, right, than these two. This one looks pretty messy, actually. Okay, so with that, let's see if we can start to figure out which of these four R values go with which of these four scatter plots. And just so you know, we should get this right because the historical chance of error is zero. All right, so let's take a look. These two, the top one in the left row and the bottom one in the left row, those are the negative relationships. And I have two negative R values to pick between. I have negative 0.71 and negative 0.98. Okay, so let's look at these sentences. The closer the value is to zero, the more scattered the data. The closer the value is to one or negative one, the less scattered. All right, so between these two graphs, this one is less scattered. So I should choose the R value closer to negative one. Oh, and you know what? Let me shrink this just a bit if I can. Give me a moment. Hold on, let me just adjust this a bit so that we can see both screens at the same time. There we go. All right, so again, the closer R is to negative one, the less scattered the data. So there we go. So that would make this one, since this is the more scattered one, it is further away from negative one. Okay, now on my two positive relationships, I'm gonna deal between positive 0.51 and positive 0.99. All right, I wanna look at this last sentence again. The closer the value is to one or negative one, the less scattered the data. Well, this is definitely less scattered, so I should choose the R value closer to one and then that one's gotta be 0.51. So those are the four scatter plots and their four potential R values. Let me check my answers and then I get my four creepy green faces and I'm pretty happy. All right, let's try this again so we can get some feels. All right, ooh, this one we're gonna have some trouble with. The historical chance of error is 35%. So let's take a look at the positives versus negatives and see what we can do here. So this one looks negative, negative, positive, negative. So this time I have three that are negative and one that's positive. Well, this one's definitely the positive one, so that's gotta go with the positive R value here. Okay, so now before I get into any of this, ooh, this is gonna be fun. We might get this wrong because these numbers are so close to each other. All right, between these three, oh, and usually I take a poll with the class. Gosh, okay, which one looks to be the most scattered? I think this one looks to be the most linear like this this looks less scattered to me this doesn't look too scattered this one to me looks to be the most scattered maybe you're agreeing with me maybe you're not but i don't have your i wish you guys were here so you could give me your opinion okay i think that one is the most scattered and i think this one is the least scattered and i'm going to go with this one as the middle okay so let's do this what did we just say the the least scattered is this one so the closer the r value is to one or negative one the less scattered the data okay so this is the least scattered which of these is closer to negative one that one okay the closer the r value is to zero the more scattered the data and i was tentatively saying that one was the most scattered so which of these negative numbers is closest to zero that one so by default we're going here Okay, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. I know I'm a stats teacher, but sometimes I get things wrong. So let's check. Oh, I did it right. Okay, it's so exciting. All right, so you can do this as often as you want. I gave you a link down here if you wanna check out that website. Maybe you don't have anything to do on a Friday night and you're like, you know, let me, let me go guess correlations. You can actually create your own group and compete against people. It's pretty fun. All right, ooh, this one's supposed to be even harder. So I'm gonna go ahead and peace out at this point. I'll try it on my own. Um, but that, that's what we have in terms of finding our correlation values, right? So it's always, oops, stat calc eight, L1, L2, Y1, and there are your R, and if you wanted your R squared values. R squared's for something we, um, we do a little bit later on in our stats world. All right, so with that, 
we've made our scatter plot, we've got our linear model, we've got this R value. The next thing we're going to do is actually start predicting with our model, right? Our data cuts off at 2016. Well, let's start to predict what's happening in the future. All right, so with that, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye. Hey, Math 31, before we get out of this example, I just want to take a quick moment and let's calculate the correlation coefficient for both sets of data. And when I say both sets, I want to do it for the, um, the original data, in case you kept that in your lists. And then I also want to look at how this works with the base year data. So for right now, you're seeing in my list the original data and L2. If I was going to get the correlation coefficient, we're going to say stat calc 8 L1 comma L2 comma Y1. And Y1, again, you start with your VARS key. Let me scooch that up so you can see it. VARS, go to the right, and then enter, enter, enter. All right, so my R in this case is 0.996. Let me write that down. All right, and that was our direction, right? It said calculate the correlation coefficient for the graduate college graduates data. All right, I did. R is 0.996. Now, I'm going to put this, this was our original data, right? Original. All right, let's see what happens when you have a base year. All right, now for my base year, if we're gonna go with the base year option, I, in the previous example, let my base year be 1990. And again, you don't have to choose 1990. You could have picked 1998, that would have set this to year zero, then this would have been year two, four, so on and so forth. But if this is 1990, this becomes year eight, 10, and we established all the way up to 26. Now, I wanna show you how you can have your calculator help you with this without having to type anything in or type too much in. Because if you want to, you can go over to L3 and L4 and retype all of this data. You can type in eight, 10, oops, sorry, what happened there? We can type in eight, 10, 12, so on and so forth, but that's gonna take a little bit of time. So what I'm gonna opt to do instead is define L3 in terms of L1. So here's what, what I mean by that. I would like to subtract 1990 from every single number in this list, right? I, I just want to reduce them from 1998 to 8, from 2000 to 10, from 20, 2002 to 12. And I don't want to write all of these numbers. So as long as your, your highlighter, your calculator cursor is up in L3. So take note, L3 has the black background here. I am not referring to the first cell. I'm referring to the entire list. Well, here's what you can do. You can say, I would like L3 to be L1 minus 1998. Oops, 1990, our base year. All right, so take every number in L1 and subtract 1990 from them. And as long as you're in L3, you can use your calculator like a spreadsheet. I'm about to hit the enter button. You can't see my thumb, but my thumb's gonna scroll down to the enter button. Once I hit enter, this list will auto-populate with all of those numbers in there for me, right? That's a lot faster to do than rewriting it. And if I wanna use the L2 data again, right? I'd like to have L3 against L4, so I have my base year and my, my percent of my graduates. Well, I would like L4 to be the same as L2. Okay, I can do that. I can just stay up in the definition of L4 and define it to be L2. I'm about to put my thumb down to the enter button. When I hit enter, it also auto-populates. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the correlation coefficient between the, the base year in L3 and my original data in L4. So let's run this, stat calc 8, L3 comma L4. If you wanna add in Y1, you can, but I want you to take note that the R value stayed the same, right? It's still 0.996. All right, so either way, we're still gonna get the same R value, and we should, the R value is the R value. And now you've seen um, what, what it looks like when you have the original data, how you can manipulate your lists to get your base year set up for you, or the, the data with your base year included set up for you. Same calculator commands after that. Okay, so we're gonna head to the next example where we finally use our model to predict. I'll see you in a few, bye.